Back to art, everybody. Today is wet felting rainbow day. Let's take a look at the video. You will need some wool fleece, a wool bat, chemical free soap, olive oil soap works really well too, warm water, bubble wrap, and a towel. The bat is the semi felted base you can see here that's cream. Now you can also see that I'm gently pulling the fleece apart. These are the coloured pieces of wool that you can see. Now wool reacts to how you treat it. So if you're gentle with it, gentle coercion works really well. But if you're rough, you will not be able to separate the fibres. You're going to want to cover your bat so that you cannot see any of the base. Fill in all the gaps as they occur. You also don't want to stack the felt too much because that will hinder the process of felting. It may be more difficult to felt and it will definitely take much longer. When the bat is totally covered in fleece, pop the fly wire over the top of it. Once you've done that, you're going to want to put some warm water and some dissolved soap. You can make soapy water, that works well as also, but now the process begins of gently massaging all that fleece together. You need to ensure that it is all wet and it all has soap and it's firm enough. If you pull up the fly wire and it's coming apart, that means you have not felted it enough. If you pull up the fly wire and it's really embedded and stuck in, that means you felted it too much and you need to pry that apart. So the key is try and work out when it is done. The felting process has begun. Now's the time to roll up your felted piece. I would fold a little bit of the bubble wrap at the top and you're going to then wrap it into a towel and that really secures it. If it gets loose, re-wrap it. Now because you're going to do a thousand rolls, I do mark every hundred rolls I do. So I'll do 100 rolls for one side and you'll notice that when I get to the end of that hundred rolls, and this is obviously being sped up, that I open it up, unwrap it, and then wrap it the opposite side. This ensures that the felting is consistent throughout the piece. You're going to find that your arms may get a little bit tired. So please feel free to take a break, but that also illustrates the importance of marking down just how many rolls you've made. So if you take a break, you can go back to it. You could even leave it overnight. Just make sure it's moist enough when you get back to rolling. You could moisten your felt very easily by just popping some fly wire over, a bit of warm water. If you still need some more soap, then just add that. That's if you leave it overnight. But again, the felting process can vary, or at least the number of rolls you require to felt can vary. And that depends on things like the humidity of the room, the thickness of the felt and fibers, and the strength, how firmly you are rolling your piece. So sometimes I've found that after 600 rolls, I'm done, my piece is done. But then other times I might need to roll 1,200, 1,300 times. So it's not an exact science. You just have to be really aware of the felt. And you can see here that the colors have come through the other side, that it's feeling thick and it is felted. And I'm going to massage with my fingers all over the piece, making sure that there's soapy water on the bubble wrap. And here I'm throwing the felt, which is the final process of it. Now you might throw it five or six times, usually around 10. Here I threw it about 30 times, but the throwing process really felts the piece very quickly. And you need to ensure that you're not throwing it on the same part each time. After it's been thrown and you feel that it's felted, it's thick enough, you need to rinse out all of that soap and squeeze out all of that water. Leave it overnight to dry, and then you are ready to iron. Let's get started. 